I do think we'll do it. I'm, I'm very positive. I see. I'm probably too. The, my problem being is I'm, I'm probably too positive. That's the thing. Okay, Kev, where's this confidence come from that we're going to get through? All of a sudden? Ah, never mind you. Um, <laughs> where's the confidence come from? I don't know. I, I think it's. I don't know. Ult, ultimate optimist. I think that's where it is, Joe. Jeez. <laughs> So I'm not saying Copenhagen is expensive, but we have just spent the entire off the ball budget on this cup of coffee and this little old flat white. I'm going to go 14 euro for the two of them. No, no. Uh, Malmo is, you, you, you sound like you've been talking to Kevin Kilpan who has done nothing but bitch and moan about the fact that we're staying in a different, we're staying in a completely different country to where the match is on. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah, it's cheaper here though, isn't it? Honestly, yeah, God. Yeah, we're staying here, yes. Down the road, isn't it? So, we come to the big playoff game, big World Cup playoff game, and some bright spot decides, I tell you what, we're going to stay in Malmo, not Copenhagen. So, that's what Nathan decides to do, put us in a different country. So, here we are, crossing the bridge, crossing the border here, between uh, Malmo all the way into Copenhagen now. So I thought when I was booking this, this was the smart option, uh, but nobody else seems to agree. As uh, I was mean, just name dropping here on Thursday night when we had Peter Schmeichel at the roadshow, we were Peter was asking where we're staying in Copenhagen, and I said Malmo, and uh, the look yeah. in his face was was akin to the look in his face when I asked him about Roy Keane. He just sort of stared at me, stared right through me for about uh, three minutes, and he didn't think it was a good idea. And nobody we've met since thought it was a good idea. It's not a good idea because they've got different currencies, which doesn't help matters. It's it's, it's very confusing. <laughs> How long you tickets off the ball? Uh, Come yeah. on. You must have a couple of tickets. Yesterday, three Stooges, yeah. so it's not messing with that. We, we got them last night. Them last night yeah. So are the Irish section or Danish section? Yeah, not saying. Not saying. saying. <laughs> Tell no one. There'll be a lot of red be worn by green tomorrow. That's a nice one. Yeah, a lot of Shelbourne supporters in town. Any goals in it, anyway. No, there won't be. No. The agriculturalists, they say. We would never be cringy enough to sit here in Denmark with a load of Danishes in front of us, but here we are, Kevin. <laughs> Help yourself. Uh, we're a very modern media organisation now, so instead of actually having the papers, we have the uh, PDFs of the papers, and also they're all in Danish, so we had to translate them because none of us have particularly good Danish. Denmark is pure fog for the Irish. They do not know the Danes at all. It's limited to Ericsson and Schmeichel. The rest is pure fog for the Irish football fans before the playoff. That is an insult to you, the Irish football fans. They say you know nothing about Denmark except for Ericsson and Schmeichel. I, I, know, I know that Thomas Delaney. He's, he's a paddy playing <laughs> and, for, and, and the land for Denmark. The Irish name. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from your first one, I, I, as, you get, as you get a bit older, probably you, do, you are able to handle nerves, but the, the playoff games, all the playoff games, all the bigger matches, all the, the, the games, World Cup games, all the ones that had a little bit of extra significance and, and you can't get away from the fact these playoff games are carrying that little bit of extra significance. Yeah. You won't like this one, Ireland, a national team built on Sherlock Holmes methods. 15 of the Irish national teams scheduled to meet Denmark are born outside the country. They're not really Irish at all. They're oh. essentially Bundiaki. Right, right. So you're calling me Bundiaki then, Nate, yeah? Is that what, is that well, you were, you were at the... Uh, yeah. uh, a pre-runner for Bundiaki. You've just called me Bundiaki, yes, that's what it yeah, is. You're yeah. Bundiaki. Yeah. Connacht connection. Yeah. What do you think, Bundiaki? You having that? You know, I'm not having Bundiaki. Whether whether it had been the the France in '09, whether it had been Iran '01, or even the Turkey in '99, it was. They were all huge games, and they all carried that bit of extra significance, that little bit of extra edge, and I suppose that made me personally a little bit more nervy. Uh, the other headline in Politiken is 15 years after Ireland's hard dog turned off. He can again win a World Cup role. Who could they be referring to? Don't know. Don't know. You tell me. Roy Keane is one of Ireland's best ever players. Now he's a national team assistant. Yeah. Is that like subtle? Roy Keane. Roy Keane's influence on a bit on a match like this. He's been in big games. We talk about Champions League players and Champions League champions. He's been at these all these matches. And I think in the dressing room tonight and around the around the around the team around the game, I think he could have got little comments to make. Mm, yeah. And I think there's a little sort of rich irony here as well that you know. Yeah. We haven't mentioned Saipan, but Roy did talk about it during the week. He said, uh, I, 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 qualify, I qualify for two World Cups in Ireland, and I said, I played in one. Yeah. Um, but here Roy, Roy was the most incredibly cool man around the big games. Oh, yeah. He'd just sit down, he'd get a, he'd get a couple of Jaffa kicks and a cup of tea, and he'd just sit there. Yeah. Wouldn't shout, wouldn't necessarily send any message out, not convey anything out, just very, very calm. And then all of a sudden, it was once the game then, once you went out to play the game, that's when. Were there no I'm rousing sorry. speeches in the dressing no, rooms no. beforehand? No, very unbelievably calm, incredibly calm. Always with a cup of tea, cup of tea, 
a yeah. biscuit, whether it was Jaffa cakes or whatever it would be, cup of tea and a biscuit, he'd always have in that the dressing room. in the dressing room. Mm. Yeah. When he was there, obviously shin pads on or whatever it would be, getting his tie ups, his boots on, just sit there nice and calm and relax with a cup of tea and a, and a couple of biscuits, yeah. But if we come away from, from Copenhagen without scoring, then I think we'll find it very, very difficult to get through. I do think that. Again, this is off Google Translate, so there could be a little bit of uh, lost in translation. Uh, 4,000 careless Irish people in Copenhagen. <laughs> huge party potential. <laughs> There's a few of the Irish bars that we're going to have a look around later where the uh, huge party potential is already being realised. I'm putting the jumper in the in the thing and he's putting the jersey in his hat. I'll put the, I'll put the jersey in the hat. <laughs> Get him down! <laughs> Yeah, but they're, they're they're physical. They're they're a big team. They're big big attackers. You usually don't have big attackers. You have little quick, quick ones. Yeah. Physical team that can also play football, uh, play football as well. I think I think we we're all a bit more, more surprised that they were they were more direct than what we thought they were going to be. It was a battle all night, and uh, if anyone wants to have a battle with Ireland, I don't think many teams will be out battle this and Yeah, you know it's, it's, it's a real tough game. Yeah, good result. He wanted to to stay in the tie. Uh, going back to Dublin, which, which we are. We'll cover and uh, cover again Tuesday. We're just looking forward to Tuesday now. Ah, yeah. yeah. It's cold though. It's yeah. Very cold. Not wanting to moan at all. Wasn't time, as cold as it was yeah. in Warsaw a few years ago. That was cold. Yeah, not yeah. Much, that was Baltic. Yeah. Like, there was no surprises. I no, no, it didn't surprise me one bit. Not one little bit. I thought. I thought that the first 30 minutes would have gone exactly like that. We, we were never going to be too open. And. Defensively solid. Yeah, but I think I think the problem was with that that I don't think they've got good enough players in midfield to play forward passes along the ground. And the one time that they did it, they opened us up. It was the, the that that centre half Bielen that stepped in, played it through to Jorgensen. It was a little bit of link up. That was the only time that they actually played. With, with, I mean, talking playing into a central area where you can get Ericsson an Ericsson type into the game. They were going long diagonal. That was a game plan. Those long diagonal balls are so easy to defend because all you well, do. Is, chain, Duffy. Yeah, unless it's going over a full back shoulder like they got in, which that was clever play, there's a bit of maybe interchange of position. Or, no, they didn't hit me with anything. And you say with Christian Eriksen and the team when they were playing like that, that's been the game plan. If you've watched the last five or six games, then they liked it a lot of longer balls, and Eriksen's a sort of play that feeds off almost scraps at times, but he's got a little bit of creativity because creativity, he's playing further up the pitch. I've never been at a match where there were so many drunk people. Yeah, there's a lot of beer being thrown down. Oh, there. Over there. Excited about Tuesday. <laughs> uh, yeah, watch, watch that plastic bag. Jesus. Uh, I am excited about Tuesday. I think it's set up perfectly. It, it's really tight, it's really edgy. I would much rather commentate or go to watch a game that's like that. Yes, the quality could be better, and I'm not denying that for one moment. The quality wasn't great tonight. It wasn't a great performance, and it could be a hell of a lot better, yes, but it's a tight game, it's an edgy game, and it will be brilliant atmosphere because of the edginess, and that will come across to the supporters. It'll be great.